welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene in my new cardigan. <laughs> Yay! Uh, the the uh, last week's thumbnail on the YouTube had you like with your stack of oh, them yeah. when they were just squares. So now we've got an actual wearable item. That's incredible. I like have gone so hard at crocheting this thing because I had to have it for this past Friday that happened just a couple days ago. And so it's all I've been doing. Like I just went crazy. I was a crochet fiend and then I put it all together and it's so small guys. Like when I tell you this sweater is not half the size I wanted it to be, but like it is very small. Um, and that's, I mean, that's on me because I never check my gauge when I crochet or knit. Like I just made the squares okay. and was confident that it was gonna work out, but the squares are too small. And that's where I went wrong. Oh. <laughs> Because this, I did everything else right. Like it's the right amount okay. of squares. I didn't do anything weird. The squares are just maybe a little bit too small. A little um, too tiny. But it worked out. The sweater is cute. It's just not like a cozy, bulky sweater. It's more of a three quarter length, almost cropped kind of vibe, which is okay. I think that's in with the kids, right? I think the kids like a cropped thing. I guess. It's just a little tighter than I would like. Like, it's not comfy. <laughs> it's not cozy. But it did look pretty yeah, good. And it was a hit at my cozy. party of three people. Um, I feel like it was pretty cool. It wasn't the coolest garment that was crocheted for the party. One of my Can friends is very, very talented and made, like, a shawl that has a rabbit on it and, like, flowers and tassels and stuff. Like, she really goes all out, but... I'm happy with how it turned out. <laughs> I, uh, first of all, I'm going to close this curtain because I'm seeing an intense glare. Oh, no. But secondly, I think it's absolutely stunning. I did see your friend, Julia, who's been on the pod. Yes. I saw Julia's beautiful shawl and I was like, it's crazy. that's crazy. But I think yours is crazy cool too. Like I would expect that in a store. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Which, I've been trying to figure yeah. out like how to get rid of it, but maybe I'll just keep it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. You got to lean in and see maybe... Maybe it will inspire you to become more cottage core. Maybe. I'm also like wearing a cute dress. Like I'm wearing my outfit today minus the flower crown because I also made a flower crown. Um, but I did take some photos. So maybe it will have a couple of those here. Yeah, we should insert some my, here. I, I feel like the whole look was pretty cute. And uh, I felt really good that day. Got some good photos of me, which I haven't had in a while. So... I also I like felt it. like your peach hair really went with the like floral oh, spring yeah. vibe. Yeah, like yeah. the color palette maybe isn't perfect, but it's it does all fit. It all tracks. So as everyone listening can imagine, before we record an episode, we talk for a few minutes mm. <laughs> to like yeah. uh, make a little game plan. You know, we're <laughs> like, what are we talking about today? What should we fit in? What do we? What segments do we want to do, etc. Um, and we have some really something really fun happened this <laughs> last week like something really fun and silly happened last week that we were like we've got to lean in and make the majority of this episode about that really fun thing but also Raylene kind of had a crazy busy week I as well did. the busiest week <laughs> so let's start with the personal updates yeah. before we move into this fun podcast thing that happened which completely impacted what we read this week. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it The only thing you plan. read this week <laughs> was because of this fun thing that happened. And we actually ended up doing a buddy read yeah. of sorts because of this. Um, listen, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. 100%. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you make a lemony treat. Mm -mm. And so we, uh, we made some really good lemonade, I think. I but think first, so let's start with our personal little updates and stuff. Um, yeah, so how about you start us off, like, why was it such a crazy week? Yeah, okay, so like I mentioned last week when we recorded um, Tuesday, the 19th of March was Kyle's birthday. So mm -hmm. it was a huge day because of that already. I had all these fun things planned. I yeah. uh, basically gave him a bunch of different envelopes for, like, food and activities, and basically he had to roll a D20 to determine Cute. what we were going to eat or what we were going to do based on the options I had given. So that was a lot of fun, but it was a pretty chill day, I would say. Um, um, because the other thing that happened on Tuesday was the Stardew Valley uh, 1.6 update came out, mm. which for those who don't know Stardew, you won't care. <laughs> but for those who do know Stardew, like it is so good. So Kyle agreed to play Stardew on his birthday, which I 
couldn't believe. I, I also played Diablo <laughs> with him as a, a gift back, you know, just given back to the people because uh, we played starting for like five hours that day. That's but anyway, awesome. so that's been a big part of my, I wouldn't say my week because I honestly was too busy to play. But on Tuesday, we played a mm. lot. I played a lot yesterday and it is fantastic. Cool. So that's the other big thing. And then on that Tuesday, this crazy thing that we're going to talk about later also happened that day. So it was, I was just, I was on cloud crazy nine Tuesday. that day. Yeah, it was the craziest <laughs> Tuesday probably ever that I've ever seen. Um, but then I, so I spent the rest of the week finishing this cardigan. And then Friday was the big day. Um, my friends and I got together and had a sleepover. And we woke up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday because we wanted to watch the sunrise for Ostara, which is the the uh, spring equinox Sabbath that we were celebrating that day. And yeah. so we woke up really early, but it was pouring rain. So we saw no sunrise, but we <laughs> we we were awake. We had a feast of quiche and lavender scones and things like that. It was very so fun. So what time was it when you had the feast? Oh, like seven. That's so funny because <laughs> I don't remember the last time I ate food at 7 a.m. Me neither. Like it was crazy, but because I had woken up so early and yeah. was just so excited for the day, I was actually hungry. I was like, this is crazy. Okay, that makes sense. We drank a lot yeah, of coffee. Like we just woke up and went hard and we uh, we had blue like iced lattes. Like it was a very cute morning. And then we went out and took photos, great. went for a walk in the rain. And then I was up so early that I just had like the entire day to do stuff. So Mm. Yeah, so those are the main things. But then on Saturday, so that was the morning of Saturday. And then on Saturday evening, I had to go to a emo themed birthday party. <laughs> I forgot that that was this weekend as well. It My all God. happened on the same day. <laughs> so I went from cottage court in the early morning to emo at night. And so I got That's together awesome. with a, with my friend. It was her 30th birthday we were celebrating. And she was like, all right, this is like a RIP 20s party. And so we went emo themed. And so I got all dressed up for that, which was really fun. And then I went to bed super late and woke up again early in the morning yesterday because that's my <laughs> new goal. I want to be an early morning person. Oh, And I want to do really? yoga. <laughs> yoga in the morning? I Who did is it. she? I know. I did it yesterday <laughs> and today. I honestly don't think it'll happen during the week because I already wake up at 6.30 and that gives me no time to do anything else. So I'd have to wake up at like 6. And I don't know if I'm willing to do that, but we'll see. So that's where I'm at. I'm kind of sleep deprived, but feeling good about life, feeling energized, feeling like I want to be better and do better. And, that's awesome. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And on top of that, we had to squeeze in a secret book that we were both reading, like you mentioned. A secret so, buddy read. Yeah. Oh, so God. it felt really busy and I'm excited to kind of get back on track now that all of the my big events have kind of passed. Although I do still have another birthday party that's coming up as well. I had to paint a sign for it yesterday. So I just been doing a lot. <laughs> it's really funny to me how many emergency crafts you It's have. a lot of emergency um, crafting. <laughs> that's true. That's most of where my stress comes from is like, am I going to finish it in time? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. But it's fun. It's I all good fun. I <laughs> also had a really busy week. It was not as fun as your week though. Basically <laughs> okay. for me, it was a, a week of fixing stuff that had broken. Mm. So... My hot water tank broke. My upstairs toilet broke. My downstairs kitchen sink oh my broke. God. <laughs> it was, I ran out of oil and I got a call from the septic people who were like, this is your three year reminder that it's time to empty your septic tank oh. again. And I was like, oh. It's all happening at cool. once. Cool. <laughs> it was all plumbing-ish related things that had nothing to do with one another. Like mm. it was so it was so frustrating how <laughs> none of them were connected. I was like, how has God forsaken me? <laughs> like with another broken thing. Like it was, yeah, it, was it was awful. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> and so I was just like throwing money and time around like nuts. And I was yeah. like, this is, this is so much. This is so much. So it felt really, it was honestly a very overwhelming week mm -hmm. with that. Um, but there was some fun things that happened. So one thing that happened, and this was also kind of out of left field and actually did add to the craziness. Last week, late last week, I got invited to submit a book, one of my handmade books, oh. to an art exhibition. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So there's an art gallery in, and it, when this comes out, it will still be open for another week or two. There's an art gallery in um, Halifax. And you know what? I don't know. It, I was imagining it was pronounced Hermes, but it's probably Hermes Gallery. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
in <laughs> Hermes. Hermes. Um, in the north end, there's a lovely gallery. It's really small, but they have a lot of cool stuff in there. And my book is on display. That I'm is sick. A f- Isn't that so funny? I'm a f- But I didn't have a book. They were like, do you have a book that you could display? I was like... I could. <laughs> and they're like, that would be great because we were trying to get together like a bunch of books for the for the exhibit. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Like this was my friend who um, is another bookbinder and was helping organize this thing. And I was like, I could. And then I was like, I don't, I've got to just make one from scratch. So oh. I actually, I guess I also had a crafting yeah, emergency, emergency where I was <laughs> like, I just spent all of Thursday night making a book. That's so um, cool. And then they asked me if I wanted to put it for sale. Mm. And I was like, are other people yeah <laughs> i've never sold one of my books right um and she was like yeah and everyone's pricing them like between 50 and 60 dollars hmm. and i was like that's so expensive <laughs> i was like sign me up for uh 60 <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> also the gallery takes half so i would only be getting 30 oh, okay so i was like sure yeah that that's sounds fine. good i mean it, how many I hours don't... does it usually take you to make a book that's a really good question. It that one probably took me four hours to make. Mm. So that's not, and and that doesn't include all of the supplies that right? go into the book. So I'm definitely losing money. That's so on funny. This that's thing. how I feel about this cardigan. I was like, if I sell it, I'd be losing yeah. money if I sold it for anything less than like five hundred dollars. I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know totally. I totally know what you mean. Because also, and what, on the other hand, I'm like, I mean, the marbled papers that I made are sort of priceless in a way. Like, yeah, true. I'm like, You'll I don't have, back. I don't have many more of those. I can't make them again. It's like it's got to be a sp- like. So I'm like, thirty dollars for is actually so cheap, yeah. but also for me to make but also i'm like wow i'll be a professional bookbinder because <laughs> yeah. someone will have bought my book um we'll see if that happens i doubt it i doubt it That'd but really it would cool, be though. funny it, I'll, let, I'll let y'all know um the other thing that happened was i went for a walk with mm. my brother and his best friend we were walking up the north up in the north end of halifax to try and find shawarma mm. and <laughs> We did. It was delicious. Good, good. And then on the way back down the street, we walked past this shop called Isle at Ease. Ooh. And I have their little uh, business card because it was such a beautiful <laughs> store, Raylene. When you come back, I'm taking you to Isle at Ease. Okay. It had the prettiest stuff ever. Like um, Sam McFarlane is the owner and designer. It says, I met her. She was so cool. And she just had such beautiful stuff in the shop. And so we can transition into our book haul here Ooh. because I got some pretty things. Okay. I got two things. The first thing is a book. They had like really beautiful coffee table type books. And this one was called Pool by Christopher <laughs> Beanland. So it says, A Dip into see what they did there a dip into outdoor swimming pools the history design and people behind them that is such a specific book (laughs) yes as you know i'm obsessed with my pool with my local pool Mm -hmm. and it is a beautiful pool and i was like i got so excited to swim in the summer and i saw this book and i was like please yes and so i (laughs) bought it and now it's mine and it's full of really giant uh photographs and it's just so beautiful so i'm obsessed with this book i think it's so so pretty And then the other thing that I bought, this is so funny, because it was a home goods store, I felt like I could probably ask and they would sell it to me. (laughs) I actually bought the stand that the book was being displayed on. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) Isn't that funny? I was like, you know the stand it's on? She was like, yeah. I was like, is that for sale? She's like, totally. Oh. Uh, I think she said that they're like for recipe books. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. It would hold it open, right? But like... it's beautiful as a display Mm -hmm. on a bookshelf it's such a beautiful stand i'm like obsessed with it and it's adjustable so you can like um display the book open it's got like a this goes up and down listen it was (laughs) i got very excited (laughs) i was like i'll take it um so now i have a really beautiful book about pools and this really cool stand so that was the first book that i got this week but then the other one that i got was a total surprise so raylene messaged me like a a week ago (laughs) and you were like uh actually no longer than that like two weeks ago and you were like i sent you something i'm like what (laughs) what 
okay. Um, and then a week ago it got in, but I was away from home. Finally, I got back and I went and I was expecting like you usually ship things in a specific type of box. Mm. And so I was expecting yeah. that. And it was an Amazon, not an, um, it was just like from a bookshop. Yeah. And I was like, oh, did I order a book? I forgot. <laughs> and so I was like, wait, no, Raylene said she was going to send me something. Maybe she just ordered me something straight from a bookshop. And so I actually filmed a video for Raylene of me oh, yeah. opening it. Do you remember I sent you that? Yeah. Because I was like, it's like 6 a.m. for Raylene. I don't want to wait far too early. hours for her to wake up. So I will, I'll just record a little video of me opening an unboxing live. Um, I guess actually the opposite of live. Yeah. Very much not alive. Very much, very much so. <laughs> Pre-recorded content. Um, <laughs> But I got to open up Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls by Alyssa Nutting. Um, and because you sent it to me, you should tell the people why you picked this one for me. Yeah, so I was just struck with inspiration because you had talked about reading short stories a little bit recently. And you yeah. were kind of like, you know, expressing interest in maybe getting some more and reading some more short yeah. story collections. And so I was immediately like idea um that is one of my favorite <laughs> short story collections and so i right. was like oh i really want you to read this i really think you'd like it but also it has a peach on the cover for, peach for those who aren't watching it has a giant peach like that's the main thing on the cover and yep. so i was just like you know what i'm just gonna send it i'm just gonna do this and it's actually kind of funny too because the reason I picked up that book was I was just at a bookstore and I was like, oh, that's an interesting title. I had never heard of it. I was like, mm. huh, I'll just give this a try. I just randomly blindly picked it up and ended up really, really enjoying it. Um, so I really thought you would like it. And it's very like based on the title, it's kind of obvious, but it is a very like female centered book collection or like cool. story collection. And yeah. it's just like a lot of different kind of weird stories and like the first one starts out with a bunch of people who are like in a pot of soup like being cooked oh. and it's like what is that all about <laughs> so like it has some really <laughs> weird stories but they're That's all so fun. varied and very interesting like i feel like it's kind of along the same lines maybe as the short story collection i read recently tw uh Mon yeah what's it called again monsters of the 21st century I feel like I I'm getting so, the yeah. title wrong, but yeah, that one. I feel like it's kind of along the same lines. And so I was just like struck with inspiration to send you that book. So I, yeah, I was so excited. Instantly, I was like, the peach, a oh, peach, that's got to have something to do <laughs> it's with definitely peachy hair. Part of it. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited. And I think a couple other people recommended this to me as well as a collection mm. they really like. So I definitely hope I read it soon. Um, because I want to, I want to keep. Basically, I think I want to keep reading short story collections until I read one I love. Yeah, to, like that's a reproof good, good to me that I can like them. But you also got something this week, right? Yeah, I received another book from Penguin. Uh, so oh. thank you, <laughs> thank you. They're kind of just coming in a couple at a time, and I just got this one, which actually is short stories as well. It's called Green Frog oh. by Gina Chung, and um, yeah, it's a short story collection with a cool cover. It's got a frog on the cover, and. I, similarly to you, was kind of like, wait, I want to read more short stories because mm -hmm. I did recently read Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, that's the that title, by Kim Fu, <laughs> and I loved it so much. So I was like, give me more, give me more. Um, so this one sounds really cool. I'll just read off the back because the thing about short stories, it's kind of hard to like explain what they are. They're usually just like little sentences that intrigue you. Yeah. Um, so with this one, we've got a pair of talking dolls help twins escape a stifling home. A heart boils on the stove as part of an elaborate cure for melancholy. A fox demon contemplates avenging her sister's death. And true to life, a mother and daughter try to heal their rift when the daughter falls unexpectedly pregnant. Dun, dun, dun. So dun, dun, dun. it sounds like it's got a good variety. There's some kind of fantastical elements. Like we know we've got an animal character, which is cool. So I'm very intrigued cool. by this. And the author's photo on the back, she has uh, cool colored hair. I don't know if you can oh. see that. So, oh my God, you're right. She's one of us. She kind of has. One looks of us. like your hair. It is like kind of similar. Like it's just turquoise. Hmm. Very cool, Gina. Right. Very cool. Mm. So yes, I'm very <laughs> excited to have that now. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Well, that's our haul. Now it's time to talk about the fun thing that happened to us and how it affected our reading. So, <laughs> it all started like a normal Tuesday. <laughs> there I was. I don't remember what I was doing. Something boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I get a text from Kaylee Hyde. Kaylee runs our Instagram because she's very good at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much better than we are. <laughs> and so she runs our Instagram and she always lets us know if something comes up or there's something we should look at. And I get a text from her that says, what? <laughs> 
and just a screenshot. And I'm like, oh boy. And I click on it and I see that Kat Dennings, that's right, Kat Dennings <laughs> has posted about Books Unbound. She shared our humble podcast. I know. On her Instagram, she said, I really like this podcast. And it's our logo that she shared. Uh huh. <laughs> And then she said, because of that podcast, I read the Kama, or I just bought mm-hmm. the Kamigawa Food Detectives. And then she shared some images, beautiful images of her cat eating this book. I don't, did you see those? <laughs> I didn't see those. That's hilarious. <laughs> I got screenshots of them because they were so cute. So we'll insert those here on the video version, but also on our Instagram for the audio version. Um, and it's so cute because the cover of this book obviously has a cat yes. and her cat eating that's, this book with a cat. That's just poetically like, perfect. <laughs> it was poetically perfect, as they say. Um, and so I, re- I read that message and I'm like, that is so nice. Like... I, I told my mom about this and she's like, you just never know who's listening. That's <laughs> true. Like, yeah, you're right. I didn't know that Kat Dennings, the star of one of me and my brother's favorite movies, Nick and Nora's <laughs> Infinite Playlist. <laughs> Love that movie. Was listening to the pod. And so we're like, okay, this is so nice. And I felt like I would love to send her a message to thank her because it actually is so nice when anyone of any size platform shares something yeah that's like 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 that's the biggest thing we can ask for is people sharing the podcast yeah and it doesn't matter if you're just sharing it with your mom or if you're sharing it with a bunch of followers like that's the way that these things grow and like more people find our podcast so i was like that's so nice of her to use her platform to share our our thing and also it just makes me really happy because i love that she like literally bought one of the books that we talked about on the like i love recommending books so i was (laughs) like okay it worked we did it it's It's happening um it was the best so i sent her a message and i was like just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing. This has made us all really jolly. Um, really hope you like the book. And also, me and my brother love Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know that's a deep cut from a long time ago, <laughs> but I love that movie. And she responded. And she was so kind in all of her messages. And and she said, like, thanks for sh- uh, calling out that movie. Because she loved, She said that she had a really great time working on it. Mm-hmm. And um, it was, we just had the, a very small but very friendly conversation and i was like i don't want to push it i don't want to be cringe <laughs> but i am gonna i'm gonna push it a little just a bit. little <laughs> <laughs> i was like if i could just find out what her favorite book is we could read it yeah and that would be That's good fun. content <laughs> <laughs> do it for the pod yep. do it for the pod so i said what's your favorite book and she said Oh, my Lord. (laughs) I have a few favorite books, but my favorite in terms of overall vibe and something I can't ever forget would be The True Deceiver by Tove Jansen. It's a short book and I read it in one day and it's very special to me. And then Kat Dennings called me out. (laughs) (laughs) This is kind of what started it all. (laughs) Kat Dennings called me out. Kat Dennings said... I know you're supposed to read a hundred books this year, so and there's like six O's, and I'm like, no, Kat Dennings, you're right. I can't not read it. I have no excuse. It's a nice short to read book. It's books exactly this what year. you want. It's a short book. So I checked, and my library had it, and I was like, okay, this is awesome. And then I told her that we would read it before the next recording, mm-hmm. which is today. But then I also went to Connor, and I said, Connor this happened and thankfully the library has the book and he said i actually own that book so connor owned a physical copy of it so i was actually able to read a physical copy which was awesome um because and we'll get into this in a moment i love this book so i was able to underline all of these great lines and i'm really glad i got to read a physical copy um but really I then obviously th- throughout this whole thing was messaging you and you were like, I'm going to find up a copy. This. I literally woke oh, yes. up to this whole yes, thing that happening. Was that was the first part. I woke up and was like, whoa, what's going on? Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, you were, you kind of looped me into this whole plot. <laughs> yeah. So how did you find your book? Did the library have it? Did you have to buy a new one? I ended up finding it from the library. I had to do some Sick. digging, but they had it. And I, so I just read it on ebook, which was really, nice. it was perfect. So it was my little yeah, late night convenient. reading. Every time I had a few minutes, I would just pull out my Kobo and read it. Um, but before we talk about the book, something else that was kind of funny about this whole thing is obviously I was yes. kind of telling people, I like told Kyle, I was like, yeah, 
like you'll never believe this she was in thor and he's like what <laughs> i was just like yeah she listens to our podcast so cool so that's how that's how kyle knows but then to my mom uh we used to watch two broke girls together so i was like yeah I was like, hey, mom, do you remember the show that we used to watch? One of the actresses, uh, like, listens to our podcast. And this is, this is, I'm quoting directly what my mom responded. It's so bad. It's so bad. She said, I loved that show. I'll have to listen to it. Because <laughs> she's going to have to listen to our podcast. If because Kat Dennings Kat Dennings likes Dennings it. Maybe it. your mom will like it. I was like, mom, if you're listening, mom, I think it's very funny and I love you. But that was just so funny. Like we're, you know, 200 something episodes deep and my mom hasn't listened to a single episode moment. But the moment Kat Dennings listens, my mom wants to join. I think that's so, that's so It cracked hilarious. me up. I was like, that's the funniest thing You sent thing me I've a screenshot heard. of that and I was like, Raylene, can we please tell the podcast? Because that's so it's funny. It's too funny. It's just too funny. Kat, maybe Kat Dennings got new listeners for Books Unbound, but most importantly, she got Mama she my mom LeMay and Mama LeMay is here now. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe not. That's so hilarious. Yeah. Um Okay, but now let's talk about the books, yes. right? Let's let's bring it back to the text. Because we read The True Deceiver by Tove Jansen. Let's talk about this book. Tove Jansen was born in Helsinki, Finland in 1914. Her first illustration was published when she was 15, and after attending art school in Stockholm and Paris, she returned to Helsinki where she worked as a painter, muralist, and as a writer and illustrator of children's and adult books. She's most well known as the creator of the Moomin's comic strip series, which were published into many books, inspired two theme parks, has numerous TV shows, films, and is incredibly internationally successful. The True Deceiver was published in 1982, and the English translation was done by Thomas Thiel and won Best Translated Book Award in 2011. All right, Raylene, I'm going to try and do a little summary, oh, please, and you yes. let me know if you uh, think that it's accurate or not. Okay. This is a story of a spooky girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is pretty spooky. <laughs> She's spooky. Her name is Katri Kling. And she ha lives in a really isolated rural village. And I'm guessing it's in Finland yeah, because that's probably. where the author is from. She's in this very remote village and it's set during winter. Mm -hmm. it, and a, a little bit Game of Thronesy, where, you know, they're like winter is coming. In yeah. this book, spring is coming. Like you're constantly alluding to when is spring going to come, yeah, but we're not, it's is not here break. yet. It's All not here yet. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like this, it adds this atmosphere of desperation. You're like, I just want to get out of this winter, mm -hmm. but it's here. And so this book is set in this thick winter. There's so much snow people are always slipping in the snow they're like trudging getting lost in yeah. the snow um and the story is about how she is trying to take care of her brother she doesn't have it seems like she doesn't have parents i mm -hmm. couldn't quite tell how long she hadn't had the parents for well, she did I don't say know I she that. did say that she had been raising her brother since she was yeah. 16 i think and it's been 10 years yeah. since then so I, i'm okay, assuming perfect. yeah She's so 26 or something in yeah. decade and I think she's I think it said that she's 10 years older than Yeah, so he was well. 6 and he's now 16. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So he she's trying to take care of him. She's trying to be good to him. Um but again, it, there's this like eerie sense of desperation throughout the whole thing because she's in such a tiny isolated village there isn't a lot of options that she has for like ways to make money um and her current living situation this is kind of the the catalyst catalyst for the book mm. her current living situation is no longer working out so she needs to get them a new place to live and this is where she cracks a plan a sneaky plan <laughs> involving this older elderly woman who lives in on a hill in the village who is an illust a children's illustrator. And this is where this really interesting auto fiction comes in mm. because Tove Jansen was a children's illustrator oh, living yeah. in rural, rural Finland who is most famous for drawing moomins. Mm -hmm. So you're, I was like, that's fascinating to me as well. Like how much is this? It felt like um, Stephen King with like misery and stuff like totally, that. Yeah. Like, he has a lot of writer characters and stuff. Writer so, characters yeah. that are like being stalked and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. where it's like kind of scary um and so it's largely the book is about the relationship between christy and Anne, the old lady character and how they're like navigating this really weird relationship would you put that i'm trying not to spoil things, yeah obviously. Would i think you say, would you add anything there um 
No, I think adding any more than that would be, maybe give too much away. It's And the other fun thing about this was in Kat's messages to you, she said... Yeah. Try and tell, like, tell me who you think the true deceiver is. Yes. And so throughout the whole book, that was in the back of my mind. I was like, I, yes, what same. is going on? And the main character has, like, she is kind of spooky, like you said. In the beginning, she's described as having these, like, yellow eyes. Like, she has kind Truly of, like... Truly yellow yeah, eyes. She's, and she's called, like, the wolf or something like that. Like, people refer to her yes. as, like, she's the wolf girl kind of thing. And so the whole time I was like, is there a supernatural aspect? And I won't say if there is yeah. or if there isn't, but I was thinking yeah, about yeah, that yeah. the whole time. I was like, is yeah. She actually a wolf like what is going on so yeah, I, was like, there's... I was i was trying to figure out i'm like what does cat mean by this who is the true deceiver <laughs> there was this really fantastic realm of um like a fairy tale vibe yes. going on yes. because like like we said like the setting is so rich it's this there's this deep forest behind everything there's this thick snow this isolated village and this wolf character mm -hmm. who literally is always followed closely by her dog yeah that she refuses to give a name to mm -hmm. which, oh that's so cool yeah it's so it's very cool, good vibes right? i understand what cat meant such cool it's vibes like a very and then you <laughs> Very vibey. And then you have the um, old lady character who's very much like, it's like uh, all she does is illustrate rabbits. So you've got literally this wolf kind of hunting mm -hmm. this rabbit character. And it's there. It's so tense. Yeah. This was one of the most tense books I remember <laughs> reading, actually. And it's not like violent or right. overly like calm, stressful. Tense. It's calm, tense, but it has such great tension the whole time that, that I was like, I actually read it in two sittings. Oh, nice. So I started it a couple days ago and I finished it this morning. And it was just, that's all I needed. Two big sittings of like, I was fully in it. Yeah, I was like there in Finland in the snow. <laughs> and I was like, who's going to get who? Well, the rabbit outsmart the wolf. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of vibe. Um yeah, so let me know what did you what did you think about it? Did you like it? How did you feel about I it? I did. Tell I me. really Anything. liked it. I wouldn't say it's like a new favorite level for me, but it's already one that okay. I want to reread, and I really yeah. want to get my hands on a copy now. So I'll be hunting for it when I go to thrift mm. stores and used bookstores and stuff. Because now I'm like, that is something I want to have. Like I really do want to have yeah. it. And I don't know. It was it was interesting. Like the tension, like you said, but I also felt like. Um, it was a really good translation. The like the translation was really I'm good. I'm so glad you brought that yeah. up because I made a note of that. Yeah. Go on. Like as I was reading it, I was just like, oh, this feels like the most crisp like translation. Like yes. I have, I don't know. It felt like just perfect. It was so the writing was very like sparse totally and kind agree. of minimalistic, which I also love. Like I've talked about this before. I don't really like overly flowery writing, and I feel like this really like the writing style fit the kind of bleakness of the setting and yeah. the kind of unknown of like yeah what is going to happen who is going to outsmart who who is the true deceiver you know <laughs> right was, yeah, yeah yeah it really all kind of tied together really perfectly and like plot wise there's not really a lot going on but it is still really interesting like every step of the way you're like okay yeah are they going to answer those letters that the children are writing like what is going on like there's just like so, like a lot of kind of non-plot but still engaging so I had a really good time with it and yeah like I said I already want to reread it because it's such a quick read and there's such so much like kind of going on below read. the surface that i feel like yeah if you're not really paying attention you might not simmering catch it all yeah yeah let's let's give a shout out to thomas teal who translated this from the swedish um so now i'm like was she actually from sweden it, it was no she really, lives in no, she lives in finland but her finland, mother but tongue was swedish and writes yeah, in swedish. yes yeah. i remember it said that she lives in a she lived in a part of finland that was still mainly swedish speaking mm -hmm. which is like really a minority there i guess yeah. i totally agree about the translation i made a note of that myself and i was just like it's so in we read a lot of translated fiction yeah. and it's so fascinating how like you can tell when something is so beautifully translated versus when something feels a bit more clunky mm -hmm. or like you feel like you're missing out on something because like I don't know. I act, We can't know. We can't know unless we suddenly learn Swedish. We can't know if this matches Tove Jansen's writing style. Yeah. But what I can know is if it feels really powerful and rich. And I was just like, I can really imagine that this is a perfect interpretation of her mm. writing style because it felt so powerful and like you said, so clean and clear. Yeah. Um, so specific and no stumbling it just yeah. felt like there was no stumbling with this translation i was like masterfully done i don't know if you remember i actually brought it here 
I don't know if you remember last year I bought Fair Play by Toph Jansen oh, yeah. when I was in New York. Um, Kaylee and I actually picked this one up together. It's a this one also very auto fictiony. Like it's the, a love story between two women. One of them's a writer. One of them's an mm. artist, which is what happened to Tove Jansen and stuff. Um, but he also translates this. I think he translates all of hers. That's which cool. Is cool. That's like we have so some I'm Japanese like authors relieved. that are like that with their translators, totally. where they're always paired up, and it like is yeah. perfect. I love that. Yeah, I love that too. Um, in the back here. I wrote, oh yeah, I had a couple, I had a couple notes. I just want to say I loved this book. Like this yeah. maybe is my favorite read of the year so far. Ooh. It was so out of left field. Like I didn't know what to expect because obviously this has got put in our laps yeah, in such never a heard random of it. Like, I had way. never heard of it at all. I was like, well, what's this going to be? I have no idea. And I just ended up feeling, I, I respected the simplicity of it yeah. so much um i was like this is not a complicated story it's very few characters mm -hmm. very few settings like it's like this house and that house and it's that's it and like very clean mm -hmm. but like in the, and that's kind of like why i love animal farm yeah. so much like There's it's no fluff one setting no fluff very short to the point but packs such a great punch and the writing is so good and the characters are so good um but at the back i wrote unreliable narrator like if anyone asks me <laughs> yeah if anyone ever asks me for a recommendation for an unreliable narrator this is now going to be in the, the top of the heat totally. because it truly was a thing where i was like am i rooting for her or am i not and there were moments where i really was and there were moments where i was like wait i don't think i know what she's up to right? and like i was doubting her the whole yeah, time yeah but i really Which like her really, as the main really character cool. like the main character is very yeah. blunt and honest and that's what totally. the um older character anna that's what she ends up she's like oh i feel like i can really trust you because you just say it like it is like there's nothing like there's yes. you're not putting on airs for anyone it doesn't matter who you're talking to like you're gonna tell the truth and so that was interesting that that was kind of established early on and then we're, throughout the book you're kind of thinking well how much is how much is of she? this is the truth yeah like you don't really and know. how much has she used how much can she use that reputation exactly because she knows that everyone trusts her oh my god it's so good yeah um the other thing i wrote down was there was a couple of moments Again, this is where the translation really shined. There was a couple of moments of like this seamless movement from third person to first person. Oh. Did you notice them? I didn't. There was a couple oh, of I, moments there, where there was like, one moment where I was like, wait, what's happening? Yeah, I noticed it once. Yeah. There was a couple, I think there was three moments where like it's, maybe it was more, but there was a, like most of the book is in the third person where it's like, she went here, she then mm -hmm. did this. But there was a couple moments where it's suddenly Christy saying like, I didn't know what I wanted to do next or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, we're in the first person and it's working yeah, and you read it for mean? a couple of paragraphs yeah. and then you're back to the third person again. And you're like, oh, that was so, oh, was so masterfully done. <laughs> so the final thing I wanted to say about it was it, it reminded me so much of one of my favorite books. And so I think that's a perfect segue for what we wanted to do next, because we thought it would be so much fun to recommend Kat Dennings. Can you believe our audacity <laughs> <laughs> to recommend Kat Dennings some books now that we've read your favorite book? Basing that, if you like this book, we think you might like these other books. How about you start us off, Raylene? What did you pick? Okay, so I do have kind of a uh, few, a few. And I actually, while we were talking, I thought of one yeah. more that I hadn't oh, chosen okay. initially because I haven't actually finished this book, but I really think that Kat might like it. And that is okay. uh, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by oh, Olga yeah, Tokarczuk. Yeah, yeah. So this has that fairy tale vibe, has an older woman main character and is snowy and kind of in a remote village type thing or not even yep. village it's just like out in the forest and there's like only three people who live in houses out there and it's kind right. of it does have that kind of fairy tale vibe to it though so i would recommend maybe checking that out um just wasn't for me but that's okay um but on to the books <laughs> that i actually really do recommend i firstly picked eileen by otessa moshfeg okay well then i will also say <laughs> i picked i picked death in her hands that's by perfect. i feel like they, i was gonna say like they kind of go together for this <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a mixture of both i picked eileen totally because one you've got this unreliable narrator who is yep. quite isolated but there's also a friendship aspect of this where she eileen becomes friends with a woman and you kind of don't know what her intentions are necessarily and things kind of spiral out of control perhaps at some parts and so i really want totally. to recommend this also i guess just realized that it takes place around christmas so it's also snowy i forgot about that yeah, vibe so it has yeah. similar vibes but this is maybe a little darker but 
not by a long shot. Um, so that's fun. Tell us why you recommend that. Yeah, this one is an old woman who is taking a walk in the woods and she finds a note and she thinks that it's a murder and she, j it's like, again a really unreliable narrator who's kind of losing it yeah and she's like thinks that things are connected and you're not sure if it's connected you're not sure if she's like actually seeing clues or not you can't really trust her and it's a it's a lot like the old lady in um in the tove jansen yeah but also you've got this like forest a, a very isolated vibe mm -hmm. and a very spooky vibe going on um I didn't love this book, yeah. but I was like, it's got the vibes. Like if, if Otessa Moshfeg told me like, I was really inspired by the true deceiver, I'd be like, yeah, I see it. Totally. My next one is a book called A Jest of God by Margaret Lawrence. Oh. This is a book that I read with my friends for book club last year. And it has like not exactly similar vibes in terms of like vibes and plot, but um, the main character is a young woman who kind of similarly to The Blue Castle by Ella Montgomery, just kind of like feeling lost and is kind of unsure about where her life is going and what's going on. Like she feels right. like everybody's trying to control her. Like her mother, the mother character is a very controlling figure in this book. But the book is about her kind of coming into her own and realizing like she wants to take control of her life a little bit, which I feel like connects to Anna, the older character in this yep. book. There comes a point where she's like, you know what I'm gonna take back my life like she feels like things are spiraling out of control and she's like I'm gonna kind of take it back and so I I feel like Adjust of God also has that kind of like calm cozy but like a little bit like something is wrong vibe so yeah I wanted to recommend that as well um but then the last book I wanted to recommend is Convenience Store Woman by <gasps> really? I Look, knew we were gonna do um, this <laughs> I had this one too it's just too perfect <laughs> um so we can kind of tag team this but the reason I picked sure. this was because the main character is also very alone, very isolated, isolated. And the writing style, I feel like, is along the same lines. Like, it's very crisp, yes. clean, straight to the point, uh, no fluff. <laughs> so that's why yes. I picked this. Yeah, totally. And it's about kind of a person who's very, like, has one goal in mind yeah. and kind of can't stray from it. Yeah. Even though everyone around her is kind of like, what's going what on you with doing? you? Yeah. This one is... I, I totally agree. I felt like this one, I was like, it's maybe it doesn't exactly align with the vibe because this is like, the other one's like a dark fairy tale forest. This is like fluorescent lights. I, know, I was going to say fluorescent store. lights of the vibe. <laughs> but the character and the isolation and the, yeah, there was definitely a similarity there. Yeah. Um, okay. There was two books that I had picked that were kind of beside th those. The one that I alluded to earlier where I said that this book really reminded me of one of my favorite books mm. is True Grit by Ooh, Charles Portis. good one, yeah. I really, really saw so many connections between the two. Um, and it really pulls out this trope that I love, which is like a main character with unflinching morals. Yes. Who's like, I am so honest and cool and chill and like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like motivated. Mm. I have a mission and I need to get that mission done. Yeah. And the mission's like done out of the sake of loyalty. In this case, it's like, I'm doing something for my brother. And this one, it's I'm avenging my father. Right. Um, and it's so good. And again, with this one, you've because it's set in like the cowboy period, You've got um, a main character who's also a youngish girl who's tr trying to do her best. Yeah. Um, but you, because it's set in cowboy times, it's a lot of like walking through the woods and walking mm -hmm. in forests and tr going through landscapes to try and find this guy. I was like, oh, this is this is exactly <laughs> that is good. I felt like that one was really good. Yes. And the this other one, I'm like, okay, this is literally the graphic novel version of the True Deceiver, The Skull by John Classic. Oh yeah, good one. Right? Yeah. The vibe is perfect with this it's one true. it's very creepy spooky scary you've got this little girl like it this is john classen is such a master but he's like these are children's books but they're not they're not just children no they're, they're not for they just transcend for children, that for right? sure they transcend <laughs> <laughs> and so this little girl is I can just imagine that being Christy, yeah. you know, or Katri, sorry. I keep saying Christy, Katri. This is Katri in my brain. Mm. I'm like very kind of spooky, lonely, sad, scared. Then she does this like violent thing in this book where you're like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of alarming that, I mean, that's this book, right? Mm -hmm. That is the true deceiver. I was so excited when I was like, guys, <laughs> it's the skull by John Classic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. All right. Well, those are our book recommendations for cat. Um, we're just like if cats listen, cat. 
if we think you'll like those if you like <laughs> this one but but we wanted to do one other thing as well get you know our favorite thing like if if i had to write down my skill set on a resume i would put book recommending on there yes i like a while recommend- since we did this so this is we, we used to wild. do this on every episode <laughs> yeah. um but we realized we gotten a little too repetitive with it so this is perfect i think we're in our element here. i think so too we wanted to do this another one more time with the Kamagawa food detectives, because here's the nightmare, right? <laughs> it's such a funny series of events how this happened. It's such a funny series of events. <laughs> I talked about reading it or wanting to start it, or like I just, you just bought, bought it. it, yeah. And clearly, Cat listened to that episode and then bought this book and then read it. Yeah, I'm hoping Cat loved it, and it's possible because a lot of people loved it. Yeah, but we'd already the day before this all went down recorded the podcast <laughs> episode where I was like. I didn't really like this yeah. book. And so now I'm like, God, that's the nightmare, isn't it? When you mention a book on the podcast and then you end up not really liking it and a bunch of other people went out and bought it. Yeah. And I was like, there are so many other cozy books that I would recommend over this one. Mm-hmm. So we were like, let's do that too. Yeah. So <laughs> how about you start us off, Raylene? What okay. did you pick for yes. that one? I had a lot of fun with this. Obviously, okay. I love cat books and I love books about food. So I was kind of like, okay. Okay, I got this. Let's let's lean yeah. in. So the first one is one that you're probably also going to mention, which is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu mm-hmm. Kawaguchi. This one is perfect for a lot of reasons. I feel like the it's so good. It, I feel it like that, cool. that book wanted to be this book, I think, is the problem. So in Before the Coffee Gets Cold, we've got a cafe that has a kind of magical element. There's this one seat where if you sit down and um, like drink a coffee there, you'll be transported back into in time and you can kind of take a look at something that happened in your life. You can't change anything in the past, but you can kind of see it and kind of reflect and maybe grow from it. And so you've yeah. got four kind of little stories that follow four different people and what they go back and see and what like how it affects them. So it does have that reflective aspect that the Kamigawa totally. Food Detectives has where it's like, okay, I'm thinking about this thing from my past. I want to go back to it whatever but i feel like this book i haven't read that book but i feel like this does it in a better way and it's very interesting and a very yeah, like, emotional I mean, this book one, in the bottom of the synopsis for this one it literally says it's a mouth-watering celebration of good company and the power of a delicious meal for fans of before the coffee i mean it makes cold. sense it's, it's so you're rooting stupid. back to read the yeah read the original yeah i feel like this is a good place to start it's even raylene going for similar colors it's true it's got a cat the colors I do love this cover. Though. I do too. I still kind of want it, even though I know I might not love it. I do. I do want to own that book. I do want to make clear if no, if people are listening to this episode and didn't listen to my full review mm. last week, I didn't hate it by any means. Yeah. I did enjoy it, just, it, and I read the whole thing. I didn't give up on it. Like I didn't yeah. DNF on yeah. it. I did enjoy certain aspects of it. I just had quite a few like things where I was like, oh, I don't know. This wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Anyways, um, what else did you pick? Yes. So the next book I picked is Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto oh, cool. because this one has the food aspect, but also is very character focused, which I think was one of the main issues with the Kamigawa Food Detectives for you. It didn't really focus on the main characters very much. There wasn't a lot of character yeah. growth. This one, the main character is a young woman who is orphaned and is kind of feeling lost, just floating through her life. And she gets taken in by her friend and his mom. And they just like mm. hang out and she loves to cook. And so it has those kind of co- cozy vibes but also is about yeah. grief and family and all that kind of stuff so it's a really yeah. short book too but yeah i don't talk about this book too often but when i read it i really really enjoyed it um but then the last book i wanted to recommend yeah. is another one that i feel like is just a perfect recommendation for this and that is if cats okay. disappeared from the world by genki kawamura yeah. this is one that i read a long time ago i think i read it on like episode three or four of the ep- of the podcast so it's been a while oh wow it's it's one of my oldest 230 reads for- yes. so episodes ago forgotten. People might have forgotten, so I'm bringing it back. (laughs) So with this one, the main character is a man who finds out he only has a week to live, I think, or something like that. He finds out he has very little time left. And this guy shows up who's like, hey, you can make a deal with me if you want, where if you eliminate one thing from the world each day, I'll give you an extra day. Like, I'll I'll let you live for one more day. And so (sighs) he kind of starts by just, like, eliminating small things, the things that seem small, and then kind of seeing how it, like, affects the world and stuff. And throughout the whole thing, he has a pet cat, and so he's kind of like, what would happen if cats disappeared from the world? Like, what would that do to things? And so it's 
also kind of about like coming to terms with dying and so it's very right. like yeah, yeah. it's quite somber and dramatic but it has that kind of magical element as well that's like well uh what would happen if if this happened and like kind of reflecting yeah. on your life and things like that but it also is a cat book and i feel like we really needed to lean into a cat book with these recommendations it's because true. the kamigawa food detectives has a cat but isn't necessarily like a cat book but that's what i'm here for to recommend the cat books so there you go <laughs> That, yeah, you truly are the queen of cat books. Um, yes. Okay. So the ones that I picked also, like I, we said, before the coffee gets cold. But then I also did pick Days at the Morisaki mm. Bookshop, which I read last year. And I just flew through. I really breezed through this one. And while I don't think it's a perfect book, it really hit the spot for this genre yeah. of cozy Japanese translated and there was a slight cut there because my plumber came which is exciting a <laughs> uh, real throwback to the beginning of this episode where I said I have a million <laughs> things that have broken all at uh -huh. once um, but yeah I was in the middle of talking about Days at the Motosaki Bookshop it hits that sweet spot of a gentle cozy happy book where there is not a lot of tension and there isn't a lot of conflict mm. but you still do have a light and interesting story happen for this main character mm -hmm. and it's so cozy because it's set in a bookshop and you've got this like great uncle character I really did enjoy it um, and it felt like kind of watching a rom-com where you're, you're but there isn't a romance there isn't really a romance but I, I just mean where you watch it and you feel content and you're yes. like, ah, that yeah. was nice. <laughs> so this hits that spot. But I had one more and it is The Hole by mm. Hiroko Oyamada. You know, I loved this book. Yes. And this is what this me reading this book is what got both of us reading a bunch of this author's books. Because we now really like this author. Um, I was like, this isn't the coziest book. But I felt like it. this, <laughs> I would put this right in between the food detectives <laughs> and the true deceiver. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> it's the perfect marriage. This was my bridge book. So I was like, okay, it's got some of this um, happy and interesting Japanese translated vibes, but mm -hmm. it is a little fairy tale-esque. Like yeah. this girl falls through a hole sort of like there's this like weird fairy tale thing going on that goes on in this book right but um but then you've got the like spooky eerie what mm -hmm. the hell's going on of Lone this woman of the of true vibe. detective yeah or the true detective <laughs> well true deceiver different vibe and i love this book so i was like i gotta sneak it in you there. gotta sneak it in so there you go those are our recommendations what a fun episode we had so much fun doing our special buddy read of yes. that other book of the true deceiver um but we also had so i had so much fun picking out all of these recommendations me too so. it's been it's been too long so it was fun to flex that muscle again yeah this one goes out to you kat dennings thanks for uh <laughs> <laughs> thanks for shouting out we our appreciate you and being such a fun sport this was a really great app and um we're now going to go record our Patreon mini podcast, The Question Vase, mm -hmm. like a Q and A. You see what we did there? <laughs> um, where we answer questions that you guys sent us on our Patreon. Our Patreon is the best way to support this pod because we don't run ads. So. We don't go. run ads, Senator, <laughs> unlike <laughs> Mr. Zuckerberg. Um, we have our Patreon. So if you want to check it out. But also I wanted to mention that we have um, hats. We have toques in mm. sale right now. So if you want a peach hat, like our peach hair. Yeah. <laughs> again, see what we did there. Uh, <laughs> Get it all Those are available now. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching or listening to this episode. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. Yeah.